I'm at 4th Street today and I'm noticing that some of my garlic is getting knocked over. Now that is not because some vagrant or vandal has been abusing my plants, but they're about ready to be pulled. When you see them getting knocked over like that, it means that they're ready to be pulled. There's some over here that actually that have already been knocked over for so long that the tops are almost all, all brown already. So I gotta, I gotta keep an eye on that. I'm probably gonna pull those today. As a matter of fact, let me do that now. Let's see what we get with stickers. Oh, speeding fork in there. Ooh. Look at that. No, it's not too bad. It's a good size. No lesser than what you can get at the supermarket. I'm a little spoiled. Last year's harvest was fantastic. Those gloves, those heads were huge. But these are nothing to show that. I mean, it's still organic, still homegrown. Still essentially free because I think I used a lot of uh, cloves from what I grew last year. Some of, I mean, a lot of it was from supermarket, but I think I paid a dollar for whatever um, whatever I bought. I think this might have been six. Six heads. I left a few, it's about half of what I planted is still left. And this is what I collected. When you when you harvest garlic with the heads this green, you can um you can you can make a braid out of it. Which is what I think I'm gonna do. And then, um, and then you can hang it in your kitchen and it makes a nice little decoration while you eat it, while you, uh, use it for your cooking. Whew. That was a little bit exhausting. It's, it's, uh, it's noon. It's exactly noon right now. And, um, I brought... So I, um... I'm taking a break because it's pretty hot, it's noon, exactly, and um, I'm frustrated because I had the great idea of coming over here and uh, putting down manure that I collected last week so it's fresh, and um, putting it on the corn, which is over there, I don't know. You can kind of see it. Anyway, so I plan to put the manure down. My nose is bothering me. I'm sorry. And, um, hold on. So I was planning to put the manure down, and I realized that because it's noon, and it's like the height of the day, and the sun is, there's no clouds in the sky. The sun is bright. It's not hazy. It's a fairly nice day. It's probably like upper 70s and pleasant, but it's still warm. And if you put the manure down, um, it's going to just burn. So, you know, if you put the manure down, put fresh manure down and it's rainy and cloudy, the rain will disperse the ammonia, which I think is the thing that actually burns. The nitrogen burns, but the ammonia is volatile. So the volatility of the ammonia, I think, is what actually burns. Because if you put it down when it's dry, the, um, the nitrogen is not dissipating into the soil and burning. And the leaves are what get burned, so I think it's the ammonia. 
Anyway, so when the ammonia volatilizes and burns, if you have cloudy days and it's raining and the ammonia gets a chance to be um, diluted with the rain, then you're fine. You're golden. But uh, today's not one of those days, so I kind of think I wasted my effort bringing all this manure here. I think I might just deposit it somewhere and let it mellow until it rains. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put it in a path and just plant the other corn and come back when it rains. I think that's what I'm going to do. What was I just saying? Something about burning up all the corn with that fresh manure. Well, <laughs> because I don't like to listen even to myself, I put the manure down, but I figure because um, there's water, somebody, uh, one of the gardeners, graciously donated some of his landlord's water. <laughs> So that we can all have some water in the garden. But uh, anyway, so I'm just gonna water these in, water this, these rows with the manure. Make sure the manure is wet. And over here, this is where I'm gonna plant the corn. I just turn the. I have to scrape some of them the mulch back. And I put down the manure. And. Um, the stuff was a little more dry and powdery. And then um, I put down the manure, and then over here I turned the soil. And over here I'm about to uh, turn the soil, and then I'm going to plant the corn. So, and then I'm going to water it in nicely. So, I hope this works because this is a lot of hard work, and I hate to ruin things on account of experimenting or being stubborn or lazy because lazy is what's spurring me on right now because I don't want to bring this manure back home so and the weather cooled off a little bit and I have water so all right I'm gonna keep going before everything gets burned up it looks like they've been here for weeks like they started out here but anyway, I just um, I just planted them in. I uh, spread some mulch over the over the soil, over the manure, and over here I haven't done it yet because I don't have any manure. I mean, and, uh, any mulch to spare. I might have my son. No, my son just got a job today. So he can't help me, so whatever. I'm glad that he has a job. But I will definitely miss his, his good help. So anyway, um I don't know, maybe I'll wait until this evening or maybe tomorrow when it's cooler in the morning. Because right now it's just too hot to be lugging manure from the other side of the building around through the front and back over here. It's just Anyway, in the meantime, I got this. All right, does this look familiar? You may have seen this thing. It's called mullen, growing on the side of a road or just in uh, abandoned places. It it enjoys um, growing in places where um, the soil was compacted and um, anyway, something like that. But anyway, um. It also has a very deep tap root, and um, wherever it grows, it pulls minerals from deep in the nether parts of the soil, where other plants don't usually go down that deep. And then uh, it pulls up all the minerals and the leaves, and when it dies, it's only a biennial, so it grows for two years. So for two years it grows, and then after the second year it flowers, and then it dies. And all the, uh, all the leaves become great manure, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, well, it becomes green manure. It becomes uh, 
mulch, humus, wonderful stuff for compost. And so I decided to take some of this stuff and put it in between my corn so that I can uh, impart some of its good nutrients. Somebody had it in their plots uh, over there. You can kind of see where it's kind of turned over. That guy likes to, this guy too, same person. He likes to uh, use a tiller. And uh, whenever you use a tiller in the garden, it's turning the top part of the third, like the top eight or six inches of the soil. But then after that, the leaf beneath that is actually becoming compacted. So needless to say, the mullein showed up in his plots. I wonder why. Um, and uh, so anyway, he pulled it, of course. He had no interest in it. If I agreed to stain. In any case, I took it and I'm taking advantage of it. So I'm tipping my hat. I'm tipping my hat to Amber. Because I saw her doing the same thing with some um, burdock. And uh, it's the same thing, same thing. It has a deep tap root, makes big leaves. And it's a biennial, two years. Actually, I think, I think uh, burdock is actually perennial. So every year it's gonna make a flower. But needless to say, it's herbaceous, so the leaves die every winter. And then they impart their nutrition and their humus, their fiber into the soil. And it uh, improves the soil, actually. So don't, uh, don't disdain those weeds so so quickly. Sometimes, actually a lot of times, almost always, it's a great benefit to them. God put them on this earth for a reason and maybe we should find out what that reason is. That's all I'm saying. <laughs>